My dear brothers and sisters, we are in the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Cycle C, and invite all of you to join me in reading, reflecting, and praying over the Gospel this Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out. An inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Geared your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gear himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken in two. You must also be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord My dear brothers and sisters, our Gospel of Sunday is still taken from the Gospel of St. Luke. We are in chapter 12, verses 32 to 48. Mind you, though, that the Gospel reading that we read today is the shorter version. And, you know, even though we skip some verses from the Gospel of Sunday to the Gospel this Sunday, the connection of the messages of these two stories to Gospel readings last Sunday and today are so close that if you remember in the Gospel of Sunday, Jesus gave us a parable. And the parable was about the rich man who had a bountiful harvest. How bountiful was his harvest? Well, his barn was not enough to store all the harvest. That, that means it's a lot, really bountiful, more than what he could expect from his farm. Because it's obvious that his barn could not contain it. That means it's really, it produced a lot beyond expectation. And what did the man do? What he did was actually to tear down his barn and build larger ones because he was thinking if he could build larger barns, therefore he could store all his harvest, his bountiful harvest. Sad though in the story that after he was able to store all of his bountiful harvest, that same night, God took his life. And so the question is, after storing those hus the, har the bountiful harvest, where do they go? To nothing. Okay? Because his life was taken that night. And so the gospel of last Sunday tells us that when God gives us blessings, he gives us more than what we can expect. He gives us more than what we need. That's why in the gospel last Sunday, his barn was not enough. He was telling himself, oh, you have more than enough you need for many years to come. That's why relax and enjoy and be merry. More than enough what he needed. As I said, unfortunately, his life was taken that same night. And to whom did his, store, his harvest go? To nothing. And so, my dear friends, in, our, in the, that gospel, we are told that when God gives us, it is meant to be shared. That the man, what he could have done is just fill up those barns. And when his barns were already full, all of those extra, those he cannot store anymore, then he could have shared it with his brothers and sisters. And by doing that, he was able, he could have stored enough for himself and also have stored treasure in heaven by sharing the harvest to his needy brothers and sisters. And of course, in our gospel today, as I said, it continues, it confirms the message of the gospel as Sunday. Because in the gospel this Sunday, it says, sell your belongings 
And why do you sell your belongings and give alms? It's even stronger because in the Gospel of Sunday, I was telling you that, you know, the extra. You share it with your brothers and sisters. But here in the Gospel of Sunday, doesn't say extra. It, sell, it says, sell your belongings. It doesn't say, sell your extra belongings. <laughs> and why do you have to sell your belongings? In order to give alms. And you might be asking, but Father, why should I give alms? Why should I share my harvest to my brothers and sisters? It's already an opportunity for me to store everything so, can I, so I can have good life and can relax and rest for the rest for the many years to come. But why? Well, the gospel today again gives us, provides us the answer to that question. The gospel this Sunday says, Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out. <laughs> An inexhaustible treasure where? In heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. That means you share with your brothers and sisters because by sharing with your brothers and sisters, you're able to treasure, to store treasures in heaven. And you ask yourself, but Father, when do I do that? I'm still very young. And you know, I'm still very strong. I can just enjoy life for the moment and let me think and do that in the later years of my life when I'm already old, when I'm getting sick already and getting weak so that I can prepare myself for heaven. <laughs> but for now, since I'm still young and I'm still strong, let me just enjoy my life. I don't give alms yet. I don't store treasures in heaven. Well, the gospel today again provides us the answer that it tells us that to give alms and to store treasure in heaven is now. It is not tomorrow. It is not next week. It is not next month. It is not next year. It is not in the future. To share with your brothers and sisters and to, to store treasures in heaven is now. And how do we see that in our gospel today? By, of course, comparing again the kingdom of heaven to a wedding banquet. He says here, be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding. Ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. You know, in the Gospels, if you notice, the coming of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of heaven in general is always compared by Jesus to a wedding banquet. Notice that. Remember the parable about the ten virgins, five foolish and five wise? They were waiting, waiting for the bridegroom to come. Remember the, the story about the king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son and all of these wedding stories of Jesus. And every time that he would mention the wedding, it is always comparing the kingdom of heaven to a wedding banquet. And so we ask ourselves, yeah, why is it that Jesus would always compare the kingdom of heaven to a wedding banquet? Mm. Well, for a very basic reason, my dear friends, a very simple reason that in Israel, for the Jews, the most important and the most special day of your life is your wedding. No other day is more important. No other day is more special. And because it is the most special, the most important, and the kingdom of heaven, my dear friends, don't tell me you don't know that the kingdom of heaven is the most important thing in our life. That's why Jesus always compares the kingdom of heaven to a wedding banquet because both of them shows us this is the most important, this is the most special in my life. And yet, my dear friends, in our gospel today, it tells us, so when? Well, you know, weddings are because it's the most important, it's the most special day of your life, that's why weddings in Israel during that time, especially during the time of Jesus, do not just happen for a day, just like now. When somebody comes to Father and says, Father, I, I am getting married. The first question that Father asks is, one of the first questions is, what's the date? What's the hour? Where will it be? And normally, we have a specific day, specific hour, specific place. But during that time in Israel, you cannot even specify the day. Worse, you cannot specify the hour. Again, remember the ten virgins. What time did the bridegroom arrive? Midnight. Do you get married midnight? 
Do you remember again the parable of the king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son? Remember that when the banquet was already prepared, did you not wonder why the king had to send his servants to summon the invited guests? Don't you know the time and the, the day and the, the, the hour of the wedding banquet? Well, because during that time, weddings are the most special day, the most, the most important. That's why when it is your wedding day, what do they do? They parade you in all the streets of the town. And as you pass by that street, by every street, you pass by that particular street, everybody joins you and celebrates with you. It's not just a family celebration. It's the whole community celebration. It's the most important day in the life of that person. That's why literally, you don't know what time, what day it will really happen. And you know, since it's the most important weddings, as I said, do not just happen in a day. In Israel, during that time, the shortest wedding celebration, seven days. Seven days. It can even go beyond that. That's why for them, remember, it's very important that you have enough wine. Again, you remember the story about the wedding in Cana? When they run out of wine, that's one of the worst things that could happen in a wedding celebration. Because, of course, if your relatives, your friends are celebrating with you for at least seven days, what is one of the main concerns? How to entertain the guests. Nowadays, to entertain the guests just for, for how many hours, it's already difficult. Can you imagine entertaining them for at least seven days? <laughs> and so what's the best way and easiest way to entertain the guests? Give them wine. <laughs> When they start drinking wine, they entertain themselves. <laughs> That's why the wedding at Cana, oh, it was terrible when they were running out of wine. And so you imagine the master in our gospel story, gospel parable today. Remember that the master was coming from a wedding banquet. Therefore, the servants, they do not know what day will the master be coming home. They cannot tell what time of the day will be coming home. In fact, in our gospel today, it says whether he comes at the second watch. And what is the second watch? Nine o'clock in the evening. Or he comes at the third watch. And what is the third watch? Midnight. Imagine that. And it says, blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant when he comes. Can you imagine the man who had been drinking for seven days, no rest, no sleep? how his attitude, his behavior is. And yet the gospel would tell us when he goes home and finds the servants vigilant, waiting for his arrival, blessed are those servants. And why are they blessed? Because the gospel would tell us, I say to you, okay, when he finds them vigilant, I say to you, he, the master, will gird himself, have the servants recline at table and proceed to wait on them. How they change roles, right? The servants are supposed to serve the master no matter how long he was gone and no matter what time of day, even though midnight, early morning, when the master comes home, the servants have to serve. That's why they're servants. But in the story, very beautiful. When the master finds the servants vigilant in his arrival, the master will be the one to serve the masters, the, the servants. And you know, my dear brothers and sisters, that tells us, number one, we do not know the day. We do not know the hour. You know, I've been teaching for 20 years and I realized I've already learned, you know, as you begin with uh, spending many, many years of doing things, you learn, you know, some strategies. <laughs> I've learned for teaching for 20 years. I always make it a point that at the beginning of the year, I always tell my students, okay, some quizzes will be announced. Some quizzes, though, are unannounced because I realized that if all quizzes and all tests are announced, they know what day, what hour will be the quiz or the test, or oh, what do you do? Remember when we were students? We don't review. We don't study. Anyway, I know when will the test be. So when the teacher announces, okay, on Monday, we will have a test. What do we do? We cram. All of a sudden, we study. All of a sudden, we review. Because we know the day 
and the hour. But if we don't know when the test will be, when the quizzes will be, they are unannounced, what do you do? Every time you go to that class, you come prepared because you do not know the day nor the hour. My dear friends, our gospel today tells us we must be prepared in every moment of our life. And yet, the beautiful thing about it, when the master comes and he finds us vigilant, he will gear himself, will let us sit, uh, sit at the table, and will wait on us, will serve us. You know when the Lord comes and we are found vigilant, we will receive a blessing more than we could ever imagine. At this point in your life, can you honestly say, you have already stored enough treasures in heaven? That you are ready and vigilant for the coming of the Lord, no matter what day or no matter what hour? Let us pray. Loving Father, we praise and thank you for giving us all the blessings that we have in life. We know and we believe that all the blessings you have given us, you gave us not just for our personal consumption, not only for our need, but you gave us everything so that we can also share it with our brothers and sisters. You actually gave us the capacity of helping our brothers so that we can also store treasures not only here on earth, but most importantly, treasures in your kingdom in heaven. Guide us always, Lord. Give us the enlightenment, the wisdom, the understanding that everything that we do here on earth must be our means of attaining eternal life. For nothing is more important, nothing is most, more, more special, nothing is more joyous than to be in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters, and have a blessed Sunday.